good evening, figure out how to... and welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am Bobby Gamonster, internet horror host, and my pal, Boris T. Buzzard. Also, tonight, we have a special fiend of mine, straight from the asylum, and the minted features, Denver. Hi, everyone! <laughs> now... While you're grinding that up, I'm going to be using this candle flame over here to call energy. Wow, that is really hot. Okay. But anyway. It's fire. Know, it's, it's fire. It's fire. And fire gets hot. And, and we need the fire element from, you know, from yes. Uncle Lou down below. And so, yes, if, if you rub your hand right across, uh, yes, right, right across the flame, the flame. Oh, okay. The, not yet. No. <laughs> the pink. The flame. I'm just excited. I know, but... <laughs> The right here yes. with the flame. <laughs> <laughs> and inducted, Bobby is Slash. Slash, would you mind joining us? <laughs> Please stand by. inducting a true monster kid, a fiend, and a blood brother. When I first got into horror hosting back in 2015, there were two people I talked to to try to figure out how to do what we do. One was Gruesome Graves of the Haunted Hotel, and the other was the fiend in the top hat, who had a buzzard as a co-host. I'm talking about the one and only Bobby Gamonster. During uh, construction and building my set and whatnot, I would, buy, I would send Bobby updates and he's very polite and encouraging from day one and supportive, supportive in everything that I did. He believed in me, he gave me my first guest spot on his show as we hosted Werewolf in the Girls Dormitory. He gave me some exposure, he gave me an opportunity. He didn't have to, but he did. That shows what kind of a fiend he truly is. He is truly a monster kid in every sense of the word. He even has his own monster museum at Gargoyle Man. That's filled with all kinds of fantastic relics and horror artifacts from all over the place showcasing his love for the genre of horror and horror hosting. Bobby, I feel, is the perfect example of what a Hall of Famer is and should be. From how he conducts himself on social media, how he treats others, ho other hosts and his fans. For over a decade, he has put his heart and soul into a body of work, a legacy, his legacy that will forever be cemented in the genre of horror hosting. He is the perfect example of fully living your dream and having fun doing it. Like almost all of us here today, we put hard work and time for the acknowledgement of one day being in the Horror Host Hall of Fame. It all starts with a dream and a passion, and I can honestly say that Bobby possesses all of these qualities. So Bobby, today that dream becomes reality for you, my fiend. Join me in congratulating and inducting Bobby the Monster and... Boris T. Buzzer. Into the class of the 2020 Horror Host Hall of Fame. Congratulations, brother. Thank you, Flash. He's a one. How can I follow an act like that? I'm telling you, he's next. He'll be up here next. Thank you, Rob. Such a sweetie, I tell you. Ah, my evilness. Greetings, my dear fiends. 
it took a long time getting here. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the six hour drive from a little town in the foothills of Virginia. <laughs> no, my dear friends, it seemed like everything got in our way. Pandemics, money, I don't know what else, but it was always <laughs> something popping up. But this year, by evilness, I tell you, we decided we were coming here one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> and we made it. I've been working for this event, this moment, I didn't even realize it from the, from the very get-go. When I was born, they told me it didn't have a cradle back then. We were kind of poor on the poor side. So they had a chest of drawer that they pulled out and they put me in as a baby. Now, a lot of people ask me, did they slide me back up into the, uh, into the uh, chest of drawer? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> but it gave me a sense of being safe. Therefore, I think that's why I like to sleep in a coffin at home now. Yes, I do. <laughs> Our, we try to live, me and my wife, the monster way of life all year round, every day, every moment, every second. We sleep in coffins. Our family car is a hearse. Our home is a tin room museum. I started when I was, oh, four years old. First thing I got for Christmas was a little haunted house. Still have it. It's in the museum. You wind it up, a little glow of dark hand came out and took the penny. I loved it. I thought what was inside that house. The windows were darkened over, and I said, I'm going to have something similar. Well, I did. I built my house to, to resemble it and didn't even realize it until much later. <laughs> yes, my dear friends, I am a monster. I'm a quarter werewolf, dear cousin. I'm a quarter witch, quarter vampire and a quarter ghoul, which adds up to 100% monster. <laughs> I found my first famous monsters magazine at age six. I couldn't read it, didn't know exactly what it said, but it had Frankenstein on the cover. And I thought that was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen, and I got it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to learn how to read when I went to school, so I could go back and read these monster magazines. <laughs> then I collected, oh, many, many other things. But for me, show business and monsters went hand in hand. When I was a kid, I would do puppets. And the puppets, of course, were monsters. I dressed up as pirates, clowns, and monsters. I would perform little plays at school until I got into high school, got into drama classes, learned how to do makeup, learned how to make latex masks. Uh, what else was it? Oh, ventriloquism. Had to do that at eight, age eight. I was building myself for this moment, it would seem, all along the way. Now, my mom and dad and my brother, they didn't always understand me, but they did accept me and did support me. My mom would always go to a flea market, and if she found something weird or deformed or monster-looking, she would say, that looks like Bob, and she would buy it and bring it to me. My dad helped me build my very first coffin. Uh, I don't know how old I was on that. I was very young. My brother would uh, catch me in it and lock it up or sit on it so I couldn't get out. I just went to sleep until he went away. <laughs> I remember one time, I know I'm very long-winded. If you ever watch my show, you'll know that I can go on and on forever, but I won't. I'm getting, I'm getting there. My father, uh, came was a, a work a night worker and he came home one night and I had spent the whole day working on a 
wig and a makeup from the uh, Devil's Reign. You remember Ernest Borgnine and as the uh, goat creature that he turned into? Yeah. Well, I, I, I made one of those. And I was sitting there, it was paper mache, so I was sitting there with a hair dryer. And I was drying it, I've been drying it for like 12 hours, sitting in one spot. My dad came in, shut the door, looked around, took two steps back, kind of looked at me and said, son, one of these days, you're going to turn into one of those monsters. And I thought in my head, I hope so. <laughs> and today, I am vindicated. I am one of those monsters. Okay, I want to get to the thank yous, and I'll be, then I'll be over. I want to thank my mom and dad, of course, and my brother. He also contributed. He would make me little coffins and, and uh, shop class. <laughs> I want to thank Halloween Jack and all the group and the game over at the, uh, uh, the uh, Monster Channel. I knew it. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Slogo Gonzalez and uh, Crimson Executioner and the gang over at the Vortex. I want to thank Penny Dreadful and Guru because they were the very first horror hosts that I ever met. And they gave me inspiration to, to uh, an encouragement. And that's the reason I tried to pay it back. And uh, there was another man at, at the same convention. His name was David DeRock Nelson. <laughs> Remember him? Okay. Well, he was there, and he had a camera, a little camera, and he had a rubber spider and a dinosaur, and he was throwing it at people, saying, do you want to be in my movie? Do you want to be in my movie? Devil Ant. Devil Ant. That's right. <laughs> he was having fun. I mean, he didn't care. He didn't care who was there, what was happening. He was having fun. And I was at a time in my life, I said, well, why not? I want to have a little fun too, doing something that I love. So I knew that, well, I had the name, Bobby Gale Monster. You can't get no more horror hosty than that. Well, you could, but you know, I was made for it. I had the museum, which was full of props. I had Anna set, which made the set. And I said the camera, right? The camera was a little crappy thing. It would go shh. And I didn't have a microphone, and I didn't use any makeup for the very first show. So you couldn't see my face, it was washed out. And I had to holler really loud to get to people to be able to hear me over that shh. So that's the first episode. I hope that I've gotten a little better since then. <laughs> Well, anyway, those are people I want to thank, but I want to thank most sincerely, because I would not be here today without this person. Honestly, I wouldn't be alive without this person. Supporting me, giving me love, helping me out, never criticizing me. Love of my life, my soulmate, Melissa, my wife. One second. Gotta have a little gossipini. Oh, negative. Mm. <laughs> Boris, my friend. Oh, Boris. Boris. Last but not least, I want to thank my co host, the star of the show, yeah. my fiend. <laughs> Okay, all right. Good thing. Good thing. Thank you all.